What's up, guys? I'm Dwayne. I'm Alicia. And this is Blackboard Gaming, where we teach you about all these great board games that are out there. Waiting to be played by you and yours. I'm a simple man. Don't want a complication. Hey, everybody. <laughs> so last week, we talked about how the transition between winter and spring here in Michigan is a little bit iffy. Yeah. Since then, we've gotten snow. Like I said, the calendar is a liar. <laughs> With that in mind, today we're going to talk about Skull Canyon Ski Fest. Skull Canyon Ski Fest was designed by, forgive me if I don't say these right, Jason Klink and Kip Noskis and published by Pandasaurus Games. Let's go to the table for a brief overview of how this game is played. Skull Canyon Ski Fest is a hand management set collection game for two to four players where the players are competing to become the ultimate skier of Skull Canyon. And this is Skull Canyon set up on the table. We would place the game board on the side based on the number of players. So this is the two player side. On the other side would be the three to four player side. And we would take this run scoreboard and place it nearby. We would then take these ticket, lift ticket tokens, the explosive tokens and these fame tokens and create a supply of those near the game board. We would then take our Yeti figure and place it in his cave at the top of the board. Over here on the left side of the board, you see one, two, three, four, and that's how we track our rounds. At the top on the four spot, we would place that daylight tracker. Then we would take these weather tokens. There are seven of these in the game. We will find the one that has the sun and place it on the first spot up there at the top which I've already done, and then we would take the other six face down, shuffle them up, and then place two of them face down at the, in the one or two spot, returning the rest of those to the box. We would take then take the 10 style bonus tokens. So if we were playing a three or four player game, we would use all 10, but this is the two player side. So we will randomly place these, seven of these out onto the board. As you can see, I've already done, returning the rest of these to the box. Next, we would take the gear deck, shuffle that up, and then place that face down and reveal four into a face-up display to the left side of the board. And then we would take the slope deck, shuffle that up, and then place that face down and reveal four to the right side of the board. Each player will choose their character and they will receive their character card, a skier meeple, a victory marker, and 16 claim tokens matching their player color. They will take their victory marker and pull it on the zero spot on the game board. They will take their skier meeple and put it in the lodge at the base of the mountain. Then they will be dealt seven of these slope cards. Then, whoever, the last, per the, the last person who built a snowman will receive this first player marker, and then play can begin. The game of Skull Canyon Ski Fest will last a total of three days, and each day is split up into two phases. You have your skiing phase, and then you have your apres ski phase. In the skiing phase, the players are gonna take turns going clockwise starting with the star player and on that turn you're going to take two of actions and there are three actions you could take on your turn you could take the same action twice or you could take two different actions so the three actions you can take on your turn is you can train you can ride a ski lift or you can ski a run training pretty much is you just go up and you could draw two cards from the face of display of the slope deck or just draw randomly off the top of the slope deck. Now, the slope cards 
come in three different colors, red, blue, and yellow, and then there are five different style types. There's also this Yeti card which acts as a Y. So when drawing your two cards, if as my first card, I draw a Yeti, then I cannot draw a second card. Same goes if I go and draw a card randomly off the top of the deck and then decide to, as my second card to take a card from the face-up display, I cannot take this Yeti. Now that rule on, doesn't apply to when if I go to the draw randomly from the slope deck and it happens to be a Yeti, I just lucked up on a Yeti. I can still draw a second card. Of course, that second card cannot be this Yeti. So let's say on my first turn, I decide to train and I take this Yeti and place it into my hand. And then cards immediately get replaced. So that's my first turn. The other second action I can take is to ride a ski lift. So if you look out onto the game board, onto the mountain rather, you see these red lines. These are ski lifts. So the player skiers start at the lodge and at the base of the mountain, they can ride either one of these ski lifts, go up to a waypoint or to another lodge. So let's say it's my second turn, I decide to ride this ski lift up to here. And that's my second turn. Now, if I had one of these lift tokens, you know, in my play area, I can discard this to ride, take this skier all the way up there if I wanted to, and that wouldn't cost an action. So now my turn will be over. But as a third action, like I said, we talked about training. We talked about riding a ski lift. Now here comes the crux of the game and how you score points is ski a run. So there are three different types of runs out onto the mountain. There's your beginner run, which is these green lines. The double lines over here, that's an advanced run. And up there, where the solid, one solid black line is, that's your expert run. So in order to score, a, uh, to ski a run rather, I would have to play a certain number of cards of the same color or the same type. So with the beginner run, it has to be two cards of the same color or type. Advanced run, it will be four cards of the same color or type. And if it's the expert run, it will have to be seven of the same color or type. So let's say I could play these two blue cards if I wanted to, or I can play these two style types. Let's say I decide to play these and I ski this Eagle run right here and I go there. So now I would score points. So if it's a beginner run, you would get two points, which you will move your score marker at the top of the board but you will also get one fame token, okay? If it's an advanced ski run, you will get four points and you will get two fame. And if it's an expert run, you will get eight points and you will get three fame, which you can see the three fame right here. The next thing you would do is you would take one of your claim tokens and place it on the run that you just skied. So I just skied Eagle, so I will place this claim token here. Now, why did, what happens with this run scoreboard? So now that I've claimed this, if the other player decides that they wanna, that they wanna ski that run, they can ski it and just score points, but they can also steal it from me. And in order to steal it from me, they will have to play one extra card. So I had to play two cards, the next player will have to to steal it from me, they have to play three cards of the same color or type. And if they do that, then they will place their claim token on top of mine. So if I wanted to steal that run from them, I would have to play four cards. So two cards for the stop type of run, which is beginner, and then plus one for each of those claim tokens there. Now, why does that matter? Well, at the end of the game, the players will score points based on who has the most claim tokens and the ones that are on top are the only ones that matter. So at the end of the game, whoever scored the most beginner runs would get eight points. Whoever scored the most advanced runs would get six points. Expert runs would get four points. 
and whoever skied the most runs overall will get four points. So that's something that you got to pay attention to when skiing these runs. The other thing you got to pay attention to is remember, I discarded the two style cards. So this run has a style bonus. So if I ever I ski a run and play cards matching that style bonus, then I would get one extra fame. So instead of one fame, I would get two fame, you know. Now, let's say instead of playing these cards, I played these two cards with the Yeti as a wild. So if I play these cards, the player that played them gets to move the Yeti to block off one of these runs. Now there's two runs down at the bottom that they can't send the Yeti to, but I can take that Yeti and place it here. That means nobody can ski that run until that Yeti moves. But let's say instead of playing those two cards, instead I played two Yetis. So whenever two Yetis are discarded to ski a run, an avalanche happens. And that means every skier on the board will move down one run. No matter where they are, except if they're at the bottom, then they don't move. But if I happen to be up here in the avalanche cause, I will either move down here or move down here, you know. So now there are these explosion tokens. If I have one of these, I could discard it and that will cause an avalanche and that will make everybody move down. So those are the three actions you could take on your turn. Once everybody has taken their first turn, then that day tracker will move down to three. So there are actually four time, four turns for each player in each uh, in the skiing phase. One thing that I forgot to mention that if a player skier reaches the bottom of the mountain during their last turn of the skiing phase, then they will receive one extra fame token. So now that this day tracker has reached the bottom, this spot here, then the skiing phase will end and we will go into the apre ski phase. The first thing we would do is whoever has their skier lowest on the mountain will place their skier here in this first spot and then this skier will go into the second spot. So now the apre ski phase the uh, skiers are going to visit these stores down at the bottom of the mountain and they're always going to be moving to the right you can't go back so let's say this skier decides they're going to do some yodeling they go here and once there no one else can go there there's only one spot so yodeling they pay one fame and they can swap any of the two uh, style bonus tokens out on the map and then gain one of these explosion tokens put it in their play area now this player decides they're going to visit the hot tub. They discard one card, get three fame. So now whoever's furthest left, it's their turn again. So now this player decides that they're going to go to the ski swap. They spend a fame, they gain one of these ticket tokens. You know? Now this player decides they're going to do happy hour. They spend the card, spend two fame. And they get to take three cards from the slope deck. Now remember, they still got to pay attention to that Yeti rule. Now, it's this player's turn. So they, they don't go to the let it ride. They decide to go to the hotel. And all players could go to the hotel. So once to the hotel, the player, the first thing the player would do is draw cards based on the type of weather. So you remember this weather marker that I had at the top of the board. And I had you guys place said to place the next two face down. They're actually supposed to be face up. But based on the next weather for the next day, you would get, like for this, you would draw seven cards. And if it's this weather token, you will only draw four cards. If it's this weather token, this one right here, you would draw five cards, but you also can place your skier. Usually you can only place your skier at the home lodge. This skier can go to any of the lodges. And you can see it right there, that symbol uh, at the top of that lodge. So this skier can actually go there if they wanted to get a head start. And then the last thing they would be able to do at the hotel 
is to buy one gear card. These are the four gear cards that were revealed as part of setup. You got avalanche alert, night goggles, ski poles, and heated gloves. So let's say the yellow player, that player was the first to get to the hotel, so they can buy one gear card, so they decide to get the ski poles. It's gonna cost them four fame, which is shown in the upper left hand corner, but in the upper right hand corner shows them how many victory points they'll get at the end of the game. And it also will give them a special power. So with the ski poles, once on each of your turns, you may use an action to move up a run as if it were a lift. So if you remember, you can only use the uh, lifts to go up, but the runs take you down. With these ski poles, you get to move up runs. So that's a pretty cool ability to have. Let's say the purple player was scoping out these heated gloves. They're gonna pay the eight fame, so they must have been doing a lot of skiing. And they're gonna get three victory points at the end of the game. And it gives them a special power. In order to steal a run from you, other players must play a set with plus one cards, slope cards. So remember, in order for somebody to steal a run, they have to play one more card, the same color, the same type. With this card, they have to play two more than what you had, you know? So that's a pretty powerful gear card. Once all players have purchased their gear and moved their skiers back to the lodge, then the Apre ski phase will end and we will set up for the next day. We will pass the first player marker to the next person clockwise. We would, the day tracker of the current day, I mean not the day tracker, the weather marker, we would flip that over to show that that day is ended and we've moved on to the next day. We would discard any leftover gear from the, that current, that previous day and then reveal four more gear cards, which I've already done. And then we will remove, we will move the day tracker from here all the way back up to the fourth spot. And now we can start the next day. The game will continue until the end of the third day at which time the game will end. And at the end of the third day, there is no Apre Ski phase. The players will take the points that they scored out on the game board, and then they will add on any points that they have on their gear cards. They would get awarded one victory point per every three fame. And then they will get the awarded points based on who did the most runs in each of the levels. So if there's any ties, then they would just split it evenly. And then we will find out who did the most runs overall and they will get awarded those points. And then once all that has been calculated, whoever has the most points will be the winner of Skull Canyon Ski Fest. You know what the hardest part <laughs> about playing this game was? No, what? <laughs> Picking the first player. <laughs> I cannot remember the last time I built a snowman. You know what? I can't either. I mean, I really, I don't remember the last time I threw a snowball. I have to agree with you. You know, but I mean, when we were younger, I liked being in the snow. No, I didn't. <laughs> I never liked snowball fights. Oh, okay. <laughs> so. You weren't good at them. I got it. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I like. You know, now I'm not trying to be out in the snow. I'll pay somebody to shovel the snow. <laughs> All right. So with that said, what did you think about the theme of this game? All right. So, I mean, we've already established that I don't like being cold, but I like the theme. <laughs> I mean, we already talked about how I love romantic movies. And, you know, those winter Christmas love stories have their share of ski lodge ah. story so i think the skiing thing was cool i like it well <laughs> all right well you you have your reasons <laughs> all right i like the theme because it was different you know i like the theme that it wasn't your usual board game theme like fantasy or gardening or well, nature or whatever yeah so i really like this theme and it reminded me i mentioned before that it reminded me of a video game that uh, Chris and I used to play on the PlayStation 2, SSX, you know, where we're snowboarding down the mountain. You I know? remember that game. <laughs> I remember that game. And we used to play that game so much. It was so, 
like peaceful and relaxed and just compete yes. competing to get down that mountain. Yes, you know. Yes, yes. So I, I, I did enjoy the theme of this game. Yes. You know, so yes. thank you, you know. Anyway, what did you think what do you think about the components? Well, the components are pretty basic, but they get the job done. Yeah, I mean I agree with you. I mean the components are like they're not like one of those games that have like you know, these Elaborate. miniatures or elaborate components. The components are just basic, but it does get the job done. And I honestly think you could say the same thing about the art. I like the art. It's colorful. Yeah. It's cartoony, but it's basic, but it gets the job done. Right. I agree with you. Yes. So what do you think about the mechanics? Now, the mechanics is where this game shines. <laughs> really, I really enjoy the a set collection. Yeah. I like that they have intermediate levels. You know, you have you can you can do a really quick run if you just want to get some points right away. Right. Or you can save up a little bit, do the intermediate, or you can go for the gusto mm -hmm. and save up your tick of uh, your cards and go for that uh expert uh yeah. piece mode. <laughs> so I like that you have those options. Um and I do, I do like that. Yeah. I, I do like, you know, saving up them cars and you get the, that expert run and you're ready. Yeah. You know, you spend them cars. But the one thing, the feeling that, that really gets me is when you spent them cars to uh, ski that run and then somebody comes and steals that run from you. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> But we are competing. Game on. Game <laughs> on when that happens. Yeah, I stole a run from you. Yes. You were like, oh, oh for real? Oh, it's on. All though. right, all yep. right. You start putting on your gloves yep. and putting your ski cap because you was about to do some stuff. Yes. You know? So, okay. So, uh, I like managing your hand. Oh, I love the hand management. And I like that. Um, so, I like, I, I don't remember what it's called. You know, if you ski down a slope that has that matches the pattern, the style bonus, the, the style bonus, I love that too. Yeah, that 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 that's adds to the challenge. It adds to the challenge. <laughs> yes. So okay. And I like, I do like the après ski part where you get to go to the different shops because for real, shopping is half the fun. Oh, oh, really? Really? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that that is cool. You get to get those little extra bonuses yes. and stuff. You know, that's how I was able to save up to buy one of those gears by trading in cars to get that fame, you know, those fame tokens. Yes. All right. So, what do you think about the teach? Well, all you're doing is basically <laughs> matching colors or matching patterns, which is a pretty basic activity, so that makes it accessible for everybody, including kids. Yeah, I agree with you. You know, it's it's really, and it's not like a really long game, you know. It's not super short, but, you know, all you're doing is matching those cards, skiing down these, uh, skiing down the slopes, and scoring those points and trying to get fame. So, yes. You know, and stealing runs. <laughs> I'll just keep throwing that out there. <laughs> you know, because that, that's why I like to compete. The competitive part is just stealing those runs. Now, I will say this. I wasn't a big fan of the Yeti. You know what? I wasn't either. Yeah, I, I wasn't. Because the Yeti is just out there to mess with folks. Yeah, it's just a saboteur. Yeah, so, but it's cool. It's cool. <laughs> it adds to the thing. Yes. All right, so. But you say you could we really teach this game to, to younger folks. Yes, I think you could, yeah. Okay. So, uh, overall, how did you like this game? Well, I think this is a fun, uh, light, family weight game. And I actually think this is a game you could use to introduce people to the hobby, especially if the theme appeals to them. Yeah, I, I, I think so, too. I mean, I really did enjoy, like I said, this theme is different. But I really enjoyed it, and it's just a light, competitive game. Can't be taken too seriously. I love it. Um, you know, thank you, Pandasaurus, for sending us Skull Canyon Ski Fest. 
So the jury's in. We, we really, love it. We like it. Yeah. We like it, you know. So if you like the contents of this video, feel free to hit the like button, subscribe, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. And I'm Dwayne. I'm Alicia. This is Blackboard Gaming. We will see you next time. Hey.